everyone, it's Natalie Dagon, also known as Mother Goose Raw and Real. So today we wanted to do a talk regarding the mitzvah of the bread making right after Passover. There are a lot of segulot with making bread right after the Shabbat after Passover. Many people call this the Shabbat, the key bread, something about the key. I was very curious and I did a lot of research on the symbolism of where did the key come from? What does this teaching all telling us? So I am going to tell you. Shabbat after Passover has a lot of symbolic lessons and bread itself has a lot of symbolic lessons for us and the teaching it teaches us. One of the things I want to tell you is about the transformation of what bread teaches us about Am Yisrael. First, we start when the Jews were in Mitzrayim. Yep, they were in the bread. And over there, they ate bread of slavery. Why slavery? Because they were slaves in Mitzrayim and the Mitzrayim were their masters. And they, whatever they did, no matter how hard they worked, their masters were the Mitzrayim. They never had independence of their own. No matter how hard they worked, they had their masters on top of them. Moshe comes to life. Moshe comes to rescue them. And God tells them that he's going to redeem them. So what do we learn from the redeeming part? When Hashem comes and tells B'nai Israel, got to get ready. We're getting out of Mitzrayim. What do the Jews do? They go hard, work hard, make their dough as the best as they can to carry it out with them. Hashem says, get out now. B'nai Israel, chop, 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 gets their stuff ready and runs out. And what do they have? Unleavened bread. Their bread did not have time to rise. You might think to yourself, what does this have to do with this story? A lot. I asked my husband, please tell me, this makes no sense to me. The master of the universe, God, that has the ability to split the Red Sea, to be able to do all the mitzvot. I told my husband, I, I asked my husband, Rabbi Bishan, this makes no sense. Why did the Jews have to make bread? Why couldn't Hashem just give them the bread? Why is it that they had to make their bread, make the dough, the dough doesn't rise, and they get unleavened bread? And my husband said, Hashem always wants us to do our hishtadlut, our effort. God does what he does, but first the effort has to come from you. You put in your effort, you do what you can, and then God blesses you with the rest. So the next one is we go from a bread of slavery to bread of freedom. That's what matzah was. Because B'nai Israel ran out of Mitzrayim, and their bread didn't have time to rise. So what happened? It turned into matzah, what we call now, which is internationally known all over the world as the Jewish bread that we eat on Passover, on Pesach. So you go from bread of slavery to bread of freedom to what do you get next? The heavenly bread. 30 days goes by. After 30 days, what happens? Their matzah finishes. So they go to Moshe and say, what now? We don't have a bread. What are we going to do? So Moshe tells them, as you can see, have no worries. Hashem is going to send us what? The heavenly bread. That's a bread that came from the heaven. It was called Lechem Mana. The Lechem that came from the Shemaim. And we would say the bracha for that. Hamotzi Lechem Min HaShamayim. Lechem Mana Min HaShamayim. And only on Friday, that bread came double. And that's why every Friday night, we say hamotzi on two loaves of bread. So now we have bread of slavery, bread of freedom, heavenly bread. Now that takes us to the next bread, which is the ultimate bread of the mitzvah that Hashem is giving us. Follow me and I'll show you what that is. This is ultimately the biggest bread of all that is supposed to we're supposed to work on. The mitzvah of Hafrasha Kala to take when Hashem told Bene Israel after they were in the desert for 40 years. Hashem told Bene Israel, you're going to come into Canaan. You're going to come to the land of Eretz Israel. And that same God, the God that for 40 years gave you the heavenly manna. Now I am going to give you the bread through the earth. Through wheat, I am going to give you bread. And I always want to have that connection and that relationship with you because that's what a relationship is about. It's about the effort we put in, which we come to this Shabbat. This beautiful Shabbat, we make a bread. And what do we do? We poke a hole with the key. There's difference of opinions on how you do it. 
Some choose to make the key, some just take the key and poke in it. And we tell God, because this is exactly the timing, the Shabbat after Passover was the time that Bnei Israel, the second day of Pesach, is when they got to Eretz Israel. And after 40 years of getting the Lecha Mana, the bread from Shamaim, now they had to eat the bread of their labor, the bread of their work, the bread of their investment and their time. And this was it. This was the Shabbat. So Hashem says, you want Parnasa from me? You want me to bless you with a good income? What do you got to do? Pull up your sleeves, my friend. Get your hand in there. Make the bread. Make the dough. Transform what I've given you into a bracha, and I will continue to give you blessing. So when we make bread, the Shabbat after Passover, we're telling HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we're telling Hashem, Hashem, I'm putting my hishtad lut, I'm putting my effort, and I have Amuna in you to bless me with the parnasa that I need. Bless my family. Bless my husband with the parnasa we need for this year. Bless my congregation. Bless my community with the parnasa we need because ultimately, oh my, the key to my parnasa is in your hand. It's in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's hand. So you do the effort. You work as hard as you can, but ultimately, God decides how much to give you. So the three reasons why it's so symbolic to make the bread after Passover. One is because the, the Shabbat right after Passover, it's also the week right before Rosh Chodesh Iyar. And Rosh Chodesh Iyar was when the man started coming down. And the man was the sustenance for income because that was the food they needed. Second, the Shabbat after Passover was the first time that Bnei Israel had to make bread from the, the effort of their own hand. And third of all, we run from one mitzvah to another mitzvah. We don't say we just pass, okay, we just celebrated Passover, give me time till next week. Immediately, we go to the next mitzvah. This is why it's so symbolic to be able to run and do the mitzvah. And we tell Hashem, we are grateful for what you've given us. And we will do it with hishtalut of our hand. And you continue to bless us with the parnasa that we need. Because parnasa comes from God, but the effort has to first come from us.